Call to order the regular meeting of the Forest Hills Local School District Board of Education on April 27th, 2015. The treasurer, please call the roll. Mrs. Bissinger. Here. Mr. Fruman. Here. Dr. Heiss. Here. Mr. Hamilgarn. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Everybody, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If it isn't obvious, I uh, will tell you that the uh, emergency exits are to your left and behind you and here in the front of the room. Um, we have a motion to adopt our agenda. So moved. Second. Mr. Tupper. Mrs. Bissinger. Yes. Mr. Fruman. Yes. Dr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Hemelgarn. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Moving on, approval of minutes of previous meetings. Uh, start with the approval of the minutes of the Business Advisory Committee meeting uh, March 9th. I move that we approve the minutes of the Business Advisory Committee for March 9th, 2015. Second. Second. Mr. Tepper. Mr. Fruman. Yes. Mr. Bissinger. Yes. Dr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Hamelgarn. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Uh, approval of minutes of the Policy Committee meeting, March 16th. I move that we approve the minutes of the Policy Committee meeting for March 16th, 2015. Second. Mr. Tepper. Mr. Fruman. Yes. Mr. Hamelgarn. Yes. Mrs. Bissinger. Yes. Dr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Approval of the minutes of the special meeting on March 19th, and I'll mention that those were revised uh, this afternoon, so we have a correction. Uh, so we have the correct ones. Is there a motion to approve them? I move that we approve the minutes for the special meeting on March 19th, 2015. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Tepper? Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Hemelgarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Approval of the previous regular meeting, March 23rd. Is there a motion to approve? We approve the minutes of the regular meeting on March 23rd, 2015. Second. Mr. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Helmogarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Last but not least, approval of the minutes of the special meeting on March 30th. I move that we approve the minutes of the special meeting on March 30th, 2015. Second. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Helmogarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Moving on to correspondence. Correspondence uh, with the Board of Education from the Treasurer Superintendent. Dr. Yes, uh, Mr. Smith and Board of Education, I just received hot off the presses some correspondence that I'd just love to share with, with the Board and our community. Um, if you remember, I think it was a little over a couple months ago where um, we um, approved a trip to Washington, D.C. for our uh, future educator chapter of, of Anderson High School. Um, and they were competing in the national competition because they had done so well in their state competition. So the information that I got today was Anderson High School's future education chapter qualified for eight different competitions and finished in the top ten in seven of those in the country, uh, which is phenomenal. And, and of those, and I'll talk just a hair more about those, we actually had one national champion. So with that, uh, without, there's, a, there's a lot of students' names that we will most definitely get out in, in, uh, in, in the media, but uh, the top uh, events that they participated in was uh, different presentations on ethical dilemma, service learning, researching, learning, and challenges. Um, and then we finished, they, we finished in the top 10 in those, and then we finished fourth place in public speaking. We finished third place in recruitment and marketing, we finished third place in exploring education, and Anderson High School's team finished in first place in a TED Talk on creative lecture. So I just want to say congratulations to the Anderson High School students for a job well done. And um, then on another note, um, uh, just very quickly on the same note, um, kind of as uh, of all the other teams in Ohio that, that uh, went to the national competition, there was only other one team that finished in the top 10 and only three. Anyway, thank you so very much. Mr. Tepper? Yep. Um, I'm not sure this is correspondence, but uh, the uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club uh, did their um, grand opening uh, yes. at Mercer this afternoon, and uh, that was quite an event, and I just want to congratulate everybody involved in making that happen uh, to, to get a program like that off the ground. Uh, there were a lot of people, so I'm not going to start naming names, but uh, that was uh, really neat. And it's uh, also, I think, important to understand 
that uh, there's an education component to their program. And so uh, it fits in with everything we're trying to do in here at Forest Hills. But uh, congratulations to those who got that program off the ground. Um, next up is procedure for uh, public commentary. Now this meeting is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be cons uh, considered a public uh, meeting. Uh, there is a time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda under public commentary. And tonight that will be after uh, recognition. Uh, individuals who'd like to share their opinions or comments concerning a topic on the board's agenda uh, should list the item on the green card available here from the secretaries and uh, remarks should be addressed to the board as a group and be within the five minute time limit. If several people wish to speak on the same topic, the time limit will be adjusted to three minutes. Uh, moving on, now the fun part of the meeting. Uh, we're gonna kick things off. This is uh, recognition evening and I'm pleased to see so many people here and uh, we'll start off, uh, Dr. Jackson, will you introduce the, uh, the first uh, honoree? Absolutely. First, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Betsy Ryan for, from our Director of Student Services who's going to be talking about one of our students of the year. So, Mrs. Ryan. My most favorite thing to do. All right. On April 14th, the Anderson Area Chamber of Commerce recognized Alex Stringfellow as our Anderson Area Chamber of Commerce Student of the Year. Several nominations were submitted by our administrators, teachers, um, many district employees for this um, commendation. And I'd like to ask Alex to come on up if he is here this evening. I know he's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, if, um, I will go ahead and, if it's okay, read his nomination from, um, actually this nomination is from uh, Mr. Broadwater, our Anderson High School principal. I am nominating Alex Stringfellow simply, um, simply because he's the most outstanding young man I have ever encountered as an educator for 28 years. Alex is so well-rounded in all facets of education and life that it's hard to believe he's only a senior at Anderson High School. Alex is one of our National Merit finalists, is ranked second in his amazing senior class. He strives to do his best by taking 13 advanced placement classes over his career, as well as countless honors classes. Alex currently has a 4.627 GPA. In looking at his academic prowess, one might assume Alex is simply focused on his classwork and nothing else. This is far from the truth, as you can imagine. He possesses an amazing sense of self, and humor and is extremely well liked by his peers. He was selected by Forest Hill School District to visit China this summer with Dr. last summer with Dr. Jackson, came back with many great stories and presented them to various groups. He's active in many clubs and activities, was named the Eastern Cincinnati Conference Player of the Year for Academic Quiz Team. He's the captain of the team and has led the Academic Quiz Team to the regionals being held in April. Alex also led the Anderson High School Science Olympiad group to a state placement. He's led the Anderson High School Jets team to a state final. And Anderson High School received a $5,000 scholarship. He's an amazing young man and deserving of his recognition. And that is his nomination. Uh, the superintendent is recommending the board commend Alex Stringfellow for his achievement and distinction and a certificate of commendation be presented to him. The motion? I move that we uh, commend Alex Stringfield, Stringfellow, who I know well. Second. Second. Yep. Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Hamelgarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Thank you very much. You. you know, Forest Hills is lucky to have some of the best and the brightest and educators among all of our staff. Uh, Forest Hills teachers, counselors, support staff, they repeatedly go above and beyond their call of duty to ensure that our students grow up socially, academically, and emotionally. Uh, the, their work is tireless, as we know, to provide the students with quality education so that they can prosper and achieve in this 21st century. Their dedication is key to uh, providing quality public school system that meets the diverse model for every student for their success. So with that tonight, I have the honor to honor some of our, uh, our educators and some of the rewards that they received this year. We're going to start with Mr. John English, Senor English. Uh, I, 
am so privileged. Uh, John is, a, is the Spanish teacher at uh, Turpin High School. He was recently named Anderson Area Chamber of the Commerce Educator of the Year. Um, Turpin High School Faculty Administration nominated John for this award. Uh, John focuses, as I said, on with the students on the importance of having a global awareness to the world, not just speaking a foreign language. The importance of knowing another language and its culture of foundation is important, but he also believes that the classroom instruction combined with outside experiences creates awareness for it and passion. Therefore, for the past 25 years, John has provided a once-in-a-lifetime experience for students by taking them around the world to Spain, to Portugal, to Morocco, to Italy, to France, to England, and to Costa Rica. We cannot count the number of students who minored in Spanish and in college because of Mr. English, who have studied and worked abroad and have also entered the Peace Corps, as John did earlier in his career. Um, so with that, as student council, he, as a student council leader, he has also empowered students to create positive and be engaged in culture and participation in the community service. I'd like to congratulate John English, Senior English. This award is well deserved, and we are so lucky to have you as a teacher at Turpin High School. Thank you. So, with that, thank you. John, I'll, I'll get this to you. I'll probably put it in the pony. No. Right here, right here. <laughs> um, with that Board of Education, I commend, I would, I'd like to recommend that you commend uh, Senior English as uh, the uh, Anderson Area Chamber of Commerce Educator of the Year. I move that we commend Mr. Eng Mr. English as, edu no, as Educator of the Year. I just didn't want to, yeah. Second. Everybody wanted to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Hemmelgarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. I want to add thank you. I uh, just, I know from my kids who went on trips with you, uh, my daughter wound up in the Peace Corps. I've got to believe you had a big influence on that. All the things you've done for students in Forest Hills, you talk about accomplishment. Thank you so very much. Next, we have Laura Lilly, who was recently recognized as the American Legion Post 318 Educator of the Year. Laura, is she here? Yeah, come on. There we go. Okay. The district nominated Laura for this award by stating, through advanced knowledge and curriculum and, and how to personalize teaching for students, Laura is a key component to creating a quality education that meets the diverse needs of all of her students at Maddox Elementary. Uh, her instruction is, is student-centered and makes learning come to life for these students. She works with parents to help students maximize their learning. She also helps students cultivate their personal voice in a safe and comfortable classroom environment. Laura is also highly re respected by her colleagues. Each time she immerses herself in professional development, she brings back uh, with her uh, many, many learning opportunities for her colleagues. After Laura received the local post, 318 Educator of the Year. She was then moved to the Hamilton County Council for American Legions, of which she was one. And then most recently, she is selected as American Legion District 4 Educator of the Year. And she is now eligible for the state level recognition, which will be coming soon. Board of Education, first of all, I want to congratulate Laura for her passion and for the work that she's done for our students. And board, I would like to rec recommend that you commend uh, Mrs. Laura Lilly for her outstanding work as the Educator of the Year for Post 318. <laughs> I move that we commend uh, Laura Lilly for her uh, for her distinction. Second. Thank you. Mr. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Helmogarn? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. And now we have Kim Montgomery, who is a recipient of the Hamilton County Education Foundation Celebrate Excellent Educator Award. Wow, that was a mouthful, Kim. 
Um, she was also nominated by her principals and staff at Wilson and Element and, and Air Elementary. Um, first of all, the nomination states that Kim Montgomery advocates each and every day for her students as she teaches in her role as English as a uh, second language or English learning. Um, she nurtures academic, social, and emotional success by collaborating with other teachers and attending her students' activities on the weekends and evenings. She also seeks the support of not only the whole child, but also the whole family. She relates well to the parents of the many different backgrounds, provides English classes to parents after school on her own time and collects needed household items throughout the school year for her students and their families. She is truly a bridge between home and school for these students and their families. Kim Montgomery, you are most deserving of this recognition, and we are so proud to have you represent Forest Hill School District as the Celebrate Excellence Educator of the Year. Thank you for all you do for Forest Hills and for its students and staff and its parents. I have a little story to tell you real quick before we go on. I had the opportunity to involve our teachers to kind of go surprise them in their classroom with this award earlier on in the year, or just actually from too long ago. Actually, when I went to Kim's school, which was Wilson at the time, as I was walking in, she was walking in too at the same time when we kind of collided. And I said, Kim, you need to come with me to the office. <laughs> and, and, I almost passed out. <laughs> <laughs> and there we had balloons, we had everything in order. So, Kim, uh, first of all, Board of Education, I would like to recommend that you command Miss Kim out at Montgomery uh, as the uh, recipient of the Hampton County Education Foundation uh, Celebrate Excellence in Education. I move that we commend Kim Montgomery for her uh, excellence and distinction. Second. Mrs. Dissinger? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Helmgarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. And a special recognition, and, and our last teacher this evening goes to Tim Fuller from Anderson High School, who was named the University of Cincinnati's Economic Center Teacher of the Year in front of, I think, over 500 people at a breakfast. It was an amazing uh, ceremony for Tim and, and another teacher. So only two teachers received this. Tim was honored by UC for equipping students with practical economic knowledge and skills through an understanding of fun, financial, and economic curriculum that he teaches. Because of Tim's efforts, students are learning how to participate in a global economy and to lead financially productive lives. Tim has been a regular at UC Economic Center Professional Development Workshops, uh, signing up for any and every course that he can that would make him better and more effective as a teacher. Because of this dedication, he makes economics come alive for his students and, this, and understands uh, how it is all connected to the real world uh, issues that they live in. Because of Tim, students have leave Forest Hills with more complete knowledge of the, how economy works and their place within it. Congratulations to Tim and thank you for your strong commitment to our students and their economic education. Is Tim here this evening? Okay. We, will, we will definitely get this award to Tim. Um, <coughs> Board of Education, I would like to recommend that you commend Mr. Tim Fuller from Anderson High School as the University of Cincinnati Economics Teacher of the Year. I move that we commend Mr. Fuller for his achievement and distinction. Second. <coughs> Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Hamelgarn? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. yes. Round of applause. Yes. Next up is the Hamilton County Public Health Clean Kitchen Award. Mr. Johnson, will you please present this award? Ladies. <laughs> 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 I feel very fortunate in my life to have many blessings in my life. And one, of, one of my blessings is the fact that I get to work with these ladies and get to work with and occasionally for Tia. But working for her is a whole other story. We'll go into that later. Um, but 
The, the Clean Kitchen Award is something that's, that's very near and dear to our heart. Uh, according to Greg Kesterman, Assistant Hamilton County Health Commissioner, food service facilities have a huge responsibility to protect the public health. Uh, most foodborne illnesses they see are preventable. That's why they put so much effort into the education inspection program with food service facilities that they serve here in Hamilton County. The Hamilton County Public Health Clean Kitchen Award recognizes the best uh, of the best in maintaining sa safe food service operations. The award is not easy to receive. When you see one on display, it points to an operator that takes responsibility very seriously. We all take this very seriously, and it's something that doesn't happen by accident. You have to make it a priority. And to get it three years in a row, to be one of few s school districts in Hamilton County that all of our buildings have received this is quite the feat. So with that, I say thank you to you all. Paula Highfield, Anderson High School, Terry Jones, Turpin High School, Cheryl Pfeiffer, Nagel. Okay. <laughs> I told him out okay. to work. <laughs> okay. Kelly Sunday, Air, Debbie Schreiner, Matt. Mary Tobias, Mercer, Faye Wells. No, oh, she's not I'm sorry. Nancy Mott. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you throw me out of the water. Hey, Askew's Wilson. And we've got Carla Butler here who was over at Nagel. Uh, she's now working in Tia's office when the program first started. So, Board of Education, I'd like to recommend that you commend our head cooks and Tia Strauss for the reception of the Clean Kitchen Award for three years in a row. I, um, so I, move, I, move that, I move that we commend uh, Tia Strauss and, and her um, staff of able-bodied cooks, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Mr. Tepper? Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Hamagarn? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Okay, next we're going to move into the PTA volunteer recognition portion of our uh, <laughs> meeting this evening. <clears throat> and we're going to start off with the high schools in alphabetical order. Uh, is Mr. Broadwater here to present, or does he have somebody presenting for him? Not quite as tall. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, my name is Rob Fellows. I'm one of the assistant principals at Anderson High School and it's a privilege and honor for me to stand before you all and before the board and to recognize some key individuals uh, from our parent body, um, Mrs. Sue Black and Miss Jen Masood. And I don't believe Jen Masood is here, but Sue, I'm gonna ask you to come on up, okay? So um, I have the privilege of working with 1,200 high school students and I love it, I love every minute of it. Well, most minutes of it, and, um, but I do, I do get paid to work with 1,200 students. The special thing about working with, with that many students for our, from a volunteer standpoint is that these unbelievably incredible uh, and talented and giving uh, parents give of their time, their efforts, their energy to work with these students and, and just for the sheer joy of doing so. And, and, and so there are so many things about those things that make Anderson High School a special place. And I would have to say that paramount to most would be the support and the foundation of good, solid families. And I think that's something that echoes throughout all of our schools in Forest Hills School District. And I'm certainly very proud to be a new member of the staff at Anderson High School. I've been very pleased to work alongside the staff to, to meet the students and been in awe of all of the things that happen at Anderson High School that's completely driven by parents. I know that Sue has been uh, unbelievably uh, involved with our rummage sale, one of our largest fundraisers. Um, Jen Masood, I know, has been uh, 
uh, spearheading the, the after prom, uh, which is the, the excitement is just, uh, I, I can't even uh, express how excited I am to experience it for the very first time on my birthday, five hours uh, uh, from midnight to 5 a.m. But again, I go back to these women volunteer their time. They're not intimidated to work with young people. Uh, they, they believe and they, and they value um, just that time and, and hard work and dedication. And, and it, I, I can see it in the lives of our students the unbelievable impact that, that they make um, every time they're in the building. So, Sue, thank you. Jen, thank you, wherever you are. And uh, thank you so much uh, to the board. Thanks for your service. Appreciate it. What did I do? Should be. Fantastic. Right there. Oh, go ahead. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Next up for Turpin High School principal, Mrs. Peggy Johnson. And I'll kind of touch base um, and go where Mr. Fellows left off. We actually had the luxury of prom and after prom this past weekend. So before we get into the other recognitions, I certainly want to thank all of those wonderful parents led by, I think, Jen Schlosser, uh, Linda Turner, Amy um, Gormley, but again, hundreds of mothers, fathers, there for quite a long time. Planning goes, as Ray and all of you know, <clears throat> Um, months, 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 like they're already planning for next year. It was a wonderful opportunity for our students. They love it as much as they say they don't want their parents around them. When they walk in that door and their mother or father is there, they are the proudest kids that you would ever believe. So, thank you to all of them. And um, we have three um, volunteers that we're going to recognize tonight. Kim Maurer, who could not be here with us. Mary Trout, who is, so she'd like to come up, and Michelle Johnson. As they're coming up, I'll just say briefly, Kim Maurer has been our band booster president for six years. She's also had all four of her children go through the Turpin Band. As part of that, she has been on a multitude of band trips. Uh, London with one, Macy's with another, and most recently, New Orleans with her fourth and final child. She does everything from finances to fundraising to coordinating all of the volunteers that take place um, for events, for games, and everything that you can imagine. Kim Maurer. Second of all, Mary Trout, who is our esteemed PTO president. She has led the, the transformation from PTA to a PTO during her tenure. Um, also, the mother of two Turpin students, one who graduated last year, um, is successfully finishing his, finishing his first year of college. Um, a daughter, and then two young ones who actually, Regina, three young ones, okay, I didn't meet them all. Regina, who has grown up while her mom's been the PTA president, who is spending many hours while her mom's volunteering, riding her scooter around the building, coloring, all of those fun things that six and seven year olds like to do. Mary Trout. Michelle Ma uh, Johnson is the mother of four, um, four school district uh, student athletes. And what Michelle does is take pictures at athletic events hundreds and hundreds of pictures. Instead of sitting in the stands cheering for, for her sons, she takes pictures of all athletes, posts them up for all parents to have, and affords them the opportunity then to have moments in photographs to cherish for other, forever, moments where they often would not have a memory of because they were there cheering in the stands. So for Michelle, and again, her two young children must feel like they're ready to graduate from Turpin and they have not even entered yet. <laughs> so again, please help me recognize these volunteers who I think believe in what all of us believe, that they're there for all children, not their own. And what they do, they do for the good of all of our children. And I also believe they, like us, believe that where children gather, you never know what kind of fun might happen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next up, Nagel Middle School, uh, John Vandermeer? No. <laughs> no. Nope. 
Good evening, my name is Joy O'Brien. I am honored to be one of the assistant principals at Nagel Middle School. Um, Bridget Chamberlain, are you here this evening? Come on up. Thank you. Um, as we all know, as administrators, we're just thrilled when an amazing parent volunteer kind of approaches you with a great idea for your students. And three years ago, we were lucky enough when Bridget Chamberlain presented the Play 60 program to Nagel, along with her ideas for helping us launch our first breakfast attempt at Nagel. She spent endless hours making sure this program was a great success for our kids, even getting the Bengals Who Day mascot to make an appearance at Nagel one morning. And this year, she took two students to present this program at the State Board of Education Conference, and we now have a student who was selected as one of six national ambassadors to attend the Play 60 Conference in Chicago. Thank you, Bridget, for your support of Nagel and all of its students, and I would like to recognize Bridget Chamberlain. Uh, next up, Air Elementary, is Chris Flanagan with us? No, oh, no, okay. <laughs> Mrs. Robin Rothfuss. So if Robin could come on up and join me, that would be lovely. So my name is Lisa Courtney and I'm the assistant principal at AIR. I am a very fortunate person because not only do I get to be the assistant principal, but I also get to be a good friend to Robin as her daughter and my daughter have become good friends as well. And so this is a double honor in that regard, Robin. Um, Robin has three children in our district. One is at Anderson, one is at Nagel, and we get to keep Kate for one more year. Um, she will be joining us in sixth grade next year. And so that speaks to the number of years that Robin has volunteered at Air Elementary. She is an incredible, amazing, creative soul who is always coming up with huge ideas to help our students learn and grow, and yet she never wants or expects recognition <coughs> for her tremendous efforts at Air. So tonight, I love that we have the opportunity to pull her to the forefront and thank her for the many initiatives she has championed at AIR. Through the years, Robin has taken on a lot of roles as an active parent and member of the PTA. In each role, she focuses her energy on providing meaningful experiences for our students that will truly last a lifetime. She's brought amazing cultural events to AIR like COSI on Wheels, a music technology show, a mime who encourages our students to write with such enthusiasm, and the signature project that shared the human spirit through art, music, and technology. Robin works to fine tune everything she does. She makes it so that it is that much more managed or meaningful, but also that much more manageable for those that are involved. She coordinated our volunteers of the year, or volunteers in education process, which is not a small task given the strong support we have at AIR. Um, through using a spreadsheet that allows for easy and quick communication for all that are in and out. Her legacy at AIR, though, will certainly reside with our Global Adventure Day. Each year through the years, our PTA has put on what was called a special event day, and there was a new theme, a new process, and a new learning curve with the parents that it took to run that event. Three years ago, Robin took on that event with a new vision of broadening our students' understanding of the world around them, while streamlining the planning process with a core curriculum that can be carried on through the years. She designed an itinerary that has our students travel to a different continent each year to learn about the different countries, their climate, and their culture. Students travel with their passports, which are stamped upon entering, and every little detail has been thought through thanks to Mrs. Rafis. When students complete their time at AIR, they take their passports with them, having traveled to all seven continents and a myriad of countries, and it's just such an amazing, amazing event. She works with a large team of parents to make this event happen, travel agents, we could call them. She researches and creates activities that are unheard of, including boiling silkworms to teach our sixth graders in Asia how to, how to pull from the best, and making rope out of grass. She completely transforms our school into a world, that sh or world showcase that begins with a huge blown up globe in the front of the building and ends with a parade of nations. It truly is an amazing global adventure and opportunity for our students. 
When Robin found out that we had nominated her for this or that she had won, she told Chris Flanagan and I that we had better show up with a song and dance or some kind of props if we were gonna have to embarrass her in some way. So my duet partner is not here because he is up north, but I did bring some mad props. And I would like to say, Robin, I'm so proud to thank you for being our volunteer of the year and for all of the incredible opportunities and ideas that you have. <laughs> Okay, next up, do we have a presenter from Maddox? <laughs> and yes, we do. <laughs> Mr. Trailer, principal at Maddox Elementary. Hi, uh, my name is Steve Trailer. I'm the principal at Maddox Elementary, and I want to recognize three of our volunteers at Maddox, Emily Youngblood, <coughs> Kit Ritter, and Martha McLean. Please come forward. So as they're walking up, uh, at Maddox we talk all the time about the triangle of success. And as much as I would like to say I'm copying John Wood and ours is very much simplified. Uh, we talk about three components to success. The student needs to do all that they can do, the teachers need to do all that they can do, and the parents need to do all that they can do. And these three parents certainly exemplify that. Some parents are willing to go the extra mile, and these ladies have chosen to run the full marathon. Um, marathons are never in a straight line and they're rarely considered easy. In volunteering, when you're working with young students, it can be sim very similar. Um, for example, when you're doing the musical tickets and <laughs> you're responsible to Rick Tepfer <laughs> and making sure that we get those all correct. <laughs> um, it can sometimes be flat out painful. It can also be, uh, but there can never be another anything that replaces that sense of accomplishment um, when you cross the finish line. Um, these ladies have, have run the race, they fought the fought, fight, and Maddox is a better place not just for their children, but for all children. Each of them have made meaningful contributions, whether it's to offices that they've held through PTA, events that they've chaired or uh, participated in, uh, our kids care program, uh, or classroom volunteers. They've worked hard to support our teachers in their classrooms and to show their appreciation. Volunteers like these help us to remember that our children are more than academic machines. They are complex little people who need one caring adult outside of their family. They're willing to connect and to make a difference. We're fortunate to have people like these in our lives and more importantly, in our children's lives. Thank you from the, from the bottom of our hearts and for our children. Thank you. Next up, we have a presenter from Mercer. Good evening, I'm Damon Davis. I'm the assistant principal at Mercer Elementary. And um, this evening, the person I'm gonna recognize, he couldn't be with us because he is volunteering more of his time to coach baseball this evening. So, um, but I do wanna spend just a couple minutes. Um, one of the things that we talk about at Mercer is that we recognize that our schools really are the heart of our community. And what fuels our schools are our partnerships with our families and our parents who give so much of their time and energy to making our schools successful. I have the distinct pleasure this evening of recognizing Mr. Sean Lyons, who is our PTA president at Mercer Elementary. 
Sean's been a volunteer and parent at Mercer for the past five years, starting with his daughter Grace when she entered in kin into kindergarten at Mercer. He's the proud parent of three Mercer Eagles, Gabby, who's finishing up her first year at Mercer in kindergarten, Preston, who is in third grade at Mercer, and Grace, who's in the fourth grade at Mercer. Sean is also the proud husband of Sarah, who has been a dedicated volunteer as well throughout their years at Mercer Elementary. Sean has been actively involved in the Mercer PTA in various roles that have made Mercer the amazing place that it is today. Throughout his many years of volunteering, he has always advocated for programs that bring out the best in our students, support our teachers, and his focus has always been to impact as many students as possible. With a strong background in business and finance, with a master's in business, Sean chose to put his career on hold so that he could do exactly what he has done for the past several years. Put his time and energy into making his children's school one of the best elementaries it can be. Sean and Sarah have put their hearts and souls into Mercer and he is well on his way to accomplishing his goal. We are grateful for the many years of Sean's service to Mercer and thankful that we have many more years to work together. It is with great pleasure to recognize Sean Lyons as Mercer's Volunteer of the Year. Next up is Sherwood Elementary, uh, Principal Dan Hamilton. All right, good evening board and all of our guests. Uh, Sherwood would like to recognize for Volunteer of the Year, uh, Marlene Johnson. So Marlene, come on up. And I would like to say while she's on her way up, uh, what an awesome night this is. One of my favorite nights of the year is we get to hear a lot of good things from a lot of different people. And I, I will have to say this, as I'm sitting there, Marlene says to me, after we get all the educator awards, she's like, how do they find the time to do that? And I'm like, that's exactly why you're here. <laughs> that's it, you got it. Um, so really pleased to recognize Marlene, a Sherwood's volunteer. Marlene has three great boys with us, Garrett, Alex, and Liam. Um, and she is actually a really super parent um, within our building. Uh, she's had a lot of roles um, as far as volunteering. She's been a VIE, she's been a library assistant in our media center. Um, she actually is big into the sciences, so she spends a lot of time putting together programs and things inside of our classrooms throughout the course of the day, throughout a lot of our classrooms. So she does a lot there. However, I wanted to recognize her for something uh, that deals with our after school enrichment program, which is totally run by the PTA. So Marlene is the one who heads up all of that. Uh, she's been our after school enrichment chair for four years. Um, and um, I have to read this statement and I'm gonna, I'm gonna read her quote when we were talking about, or she had talked to me about um, why she wanted to do the enrichment program. She said I, she had a goal uh, for providing our children with a range of opportunities not offered during the school day. I wanted to provide ways for our kids to discover themselves and to be the happiest, most complete people that they can be. So all she went out and did, uh, was in that four-year period, Marlene has brought 27 different after-school enrichment programs to our school. Most of these happen yearly. With between about each year, there's about 100 to 150 students uh, who participates in those programs. And those classes range from eight students to about 60. Uh, so you can do the math. There's a lot of kids and a lot of opportunities that she's given uh, to our kids at Sherwood. And not only does she just put on those programs, but most of the time, she'll be buzzing around the building at the end of the day, making sure that everything is running and running right. So she does a fantastic job with that. Um, then she stated uh, that she's not done, so she's got a future goal. She said, I want to make sure that we have all the resources to offer free enrichment programs for our students who can't afford to enroll in all of these paid programs. And she also feels it's imperative to be able to reach all of our children and to meet the goals of our Sherwood's enrichment program. So, She's done a lot of work and a lot of good things for the kids. And on the side, she finds time to squeeze in her real job, which is an emergency room physician. So she, she manages to put it all together. So uh, we would like to recognize uh, this awesome individual, Mrs. Marlene Johnson. Next up is Summit Elementary, uh, Michelle Solstead. 
There she is. <clears throat> Good evening. Summit Elementary is very proud to announce our PTA Volunteers of the Year, Danelle Bielsing and Amy Miller. Danelle Bielsing has been volunteering at Summit for many years. She has spent a lot of time volunteering and helping in the Media Center and helping out with our Strings program. She helps out once a week in the kindergarten classrooms with writing. She volunteers once a month in her daughter's classroom. Lynn Poffenberger, our orchestra teacher, says, Danelle is a wonderful volunteer, sharing her time and talents with the Summit Orchestra. She plays the piano for concerts for the 4th, 5th, and 6th grade orchestras. She learns the piano music and volunteers during the day to practice with the students during their class time so the students can hear the piano part before it is concert time. Her musical talents help the orchestra students perform together and give me the opportunity to stand in front of the orchestra and conduct the group with my violin. Her daughter, Emily, a fifth grade student, says, I like how she is around. I, I, I know she is helping with the school and other teachers, and it makes me feel happy. Amy Miller has been a familiar face in the building for many years as well. She was nominated by several teachers throughout the building for this honor. Mrs. Amy Hill, a fourth grade teacher, has taught both of her children, says, Amy Miller is very reliable. She comes in every week to make copies, hang bulletin boards. She communi communicates through the beeline and works endless hours helping with the bond issue to make things better for our students. She is very committed to helping students serve the community through many service projects. She has been a part of the Community Relations Committee, VP of Communications, Room Parent, Bond Committee, Vision Committee, Shop and Share, and on and on. She has helped out in her children's classroom once a week all year. Amy has done all of these things even while on crutches and braces for multiple surgeries over the years and having to navigate Summit's many steps. Her son, Jackson Miller, says, she has been a positive influence in my life and helped me through thick and thin and helped me <coughs> persevere. It brings a smile to my face knowing that she is playing such an important role in my life. I love that our staff nominate these two ladies because they are both very visible and have had a tremendous impact on our students and our staff. I would call Danelle our quiet storm and Amy our force of nature. We are so fortunate that they donate their talents and their time to help our kids in so many ways. I have personally worked with both of these women during their time at Summit and I can't thank them enough for their dedication to our students and our school. They truly make a difference in the lives of our students and Summit is a better place because of them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on, Wilson, Wilson Elementary, Principal Bob Buck. <coughs> Board of Education, Mr. Tefford, Dr. Jackson, it is my honor uh, to recognize these four individuals. Dan Knight, probably you can tell who he is. <laughs> <laughs> Monica McGrew, Amy Heiss, and Christy Meyer. Um, these four people, when you see them coming, you need to get out of their way. Um, these four were instrumental, especially for Wilson and for our recent fall bond. This was the Wilson Committee. They spent a number of hours uh, attending numerous meetings, passing out flyers, organizing coffees, um, it can go on and on, but they were truly instrumental in the passage. Uh, other than just the bond issue, uh, they play a key success for the children at Wilson. We have a saying, we grow together, we learn together, and we play together at Wilson. And with these four, it would uh, be impossible to do that with our teachers and with our students. So tonight, Wilson thanks you for it. Thank you. Before we move on to our motion, the order of business here to commend all these uh, volunteers, I, I just want to point out we've heard about a few programs here this evening. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of programs that are put on by 
hundreds of volunteers in our school district volunteering thousands of hours. We are so fortunate in this school district for our students to have the benefit of the programs that are made available in the Forest Hill School District. Um, I, I, Mr. Trailer mentioned the triangle of success. Part of the reason that Forest Hills is a great school district is because of the students and because of the parent volunteers and because of the loyal and dedicated teachers that we have in this school district. Um, I'm fairly involved in some things in the state and when I compare what goes on in Forest Hills to other school districts in this state, I, I, I don't really believe that there's another school district that offers all the opportunities and programs that our students get exposed to in this school district anywhere else in the state. Uh, I, I think we probably take it for granted. Um, I mean, it's good that it's always there, but I, I think it's really special and important to recognize the thousands of hours of volunteers that volunteers put in here in the Forest Hill School District. Uh, so again, thank you all for those who are recognized and, and for the many that, that were not recognized but are hard workers, thank you also. Uh, <laughs> okay, Mr. Smith, uh, the Board of Education. Uh, I recommend the board commend these great volunteers for their dedication, their service to the students of the Forest Hills, and to certify the accommodation to be presented to each of them. I'd like to make a motion that we commend these volunteers for their dedication and service. Second. Ms. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Hamilgarn? Yes. Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. And I'd like to point out Dr. Heiss had a special reason for being the one who made, made that motion. She puts a lot of time in, that's for sure. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, and I think uh, for those volunteers who were recognized, um, I think uh, is Erica uh, coordinating pictures in the back. Um, and actually, we would love to have you stay for the entire meeting uh, and get into the business portion. But if you would like to depart, I think Erica would like to catch you out in the hallway to make sure she's got all the pictures that she may need. But well, with that, I will say thank you for all those volunteers who showed up. And again, it's perfectly acceptable to leave unless you really want to stay and uh, hear the rest of the business meeting. So with that, I will say thank you. Uh, moving on, the uh, next item on our agenda is uh, public comments. I have two green cards, so we'll uh, keep the comments to uh, five minutes. Uh, the first uh, name I have is Darnell uh, Benell. Oh, excuse me, Darlene Benell. Good evening, uh, my name is Darlene Bunnell, and I would just like to say my husband and I, uh, Larry, we moved here to Cincinnati about 20 years ago, and we chose to make our home here in the Forest Hills School District because of the excellent reputation that they've always had. Both of our children, our son is a senior this year and our daughter is a sophomore. Um, they have definitely excelled in our school district. Um, they've been very good students. I would just like to address the negative uh, comments that have been made in the paper um, against Dr. Jackson as far as an investigation that went on because of test scores. Um, our daughter, who's a sophomore, she is in the pre-calculus class. She's, she's a bright student. Um, we're really fortunate in our school district to have an astounding number of really intelligent students. They work very hard. Um, they, they take a lot of pride in what they do. They want to excel. She, you know, being a sophomore, taking the pre-calculus at this stage in the game shows the preparation that she's had previously in the school district. Um, the first quarter she earned a B plus, which she was a little upset because she's never had a B before. Um, I told her that that was a fantastic grade for her. Being as excelled as she is, she's doing fine. She then earned an A- in the second quarter. When the final came around, she earned an F, which was shocking to her and it was shocking to us. 
So I made an appointment with her teacher. I went right in. Um, her teacher was very accommodating. She said that you know she would work with Brogan after school. Um, she could rework the problems and the teacher would help her to get through that. M my biggest concern was if the tests were accurate based on the curriculum that was taught, there was a major component missing somewhere along the line. And uh, that's when you know uh, her teacher said she would certainly try to work with her and bring her up to speed. Um, so we basically left it at that. Once, we, once the kids started speaking to each other, they started finding out how many of each of them did extremely poorly on this exam. Then, then the parents began talking. Um, at that point, I was very concerned. Um, so I contacted the principal, who I've always felt that I've had a good rapport with. She's very quick to respond to any, any emails that I've ever sent. Um, she met with me, and she explained that there was definitely uh, a a major problem and they were looking into it. They were trying to figure out what happened. Um, it's my understanding that this test had been given for the last seven or eight years. It was the same test and they weren't exactly sure what happened. Um, she, she assured me they were looking into it and that she would get back to me. So I, I again, you know, I waited, uh, but I know time is of the essence. If the children missed a major component and the teachers were going to move forward, I was just, it's building blocks. I was afraid that they, they, these kids were really going to miss something important that they needed to continue on. Uh, that's when I reached out to the superintendent to express my concerns because I wanted to be sure that everybody was on the same page, that we were all looking at the same, the same items. Um, he said that they, that they were looking into it uh, to see what happened. Um, the principal had told me she would get back to me, let me know as soon as they decided what they were going to do. Um, I didn't hear back from her, so I called about three days later, and she said that they, the teachers had decided that for the students who wanted to come back in, rework the, the problems that were wrong, they would uh, give them, they could earn up to 10 points. Um, for my daughter, it would have given her a C, but it didn't change her overall semester grade, so she, she decided not to use those points. Um, and after speaking to so, so many other parents, you know, um, it, was, it was disheartening, uh, basically, just, just to see that I don't, I, I think parents were afraid to, to say anything about it. They didn't want any repercussions coming back against their children or negative negativity on themselves. And this has been out your time. Is time? Yeah. And it, it's basically, I just want to be sure that the kids are getting the information they need to succeed. I think there was a disconnect somewhere. Something fell through the cracks. And all I was asking was for, for it to be looked into. Thank you, Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Marianne Davis. Did I not pronounce the first name correctly? Is it Marianne Davis? Dave, Davis, anyone going once? Okay, uh, that concludes uh, public comments. Uh, next up on the agenda is our facilities update. Uh, Dr. Jackson. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Smith, I'd like to introduce to you um, Lance Bouchong, who is one of our design team uh, representatives. He'd like to share with you our Nagel project this evening. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Uh, today's uh, facility update is concentrated on Nagel Middle School. With that, there are three primary um, pieces to this program. One of them in, in which we're going to renovate the classrooms to better enhance the 21st century learning concepts. Also a security vestibule and site circulation. On this first slide, we're showing the, uh, indicating the area for the uh, security vestibule. It will be immediately left to the current main entrance. 
We're going to provide, uh, modify the existing principal's office, relocate him to another space, and provide a vestibule in which we would, after the students all arrive at school, all doors will be locked. The only door that will be unlocked is that first door um, to the exterior. After that, you'll enter a vestibule into a place in which that door, set of doors will be locked and you will be buzzed in after the staff recognizes who you are and what your purposes are. Uh, we've looked at several different options for this and this is sort of the, the current option with a few tweaks that we just decided in the steering committee meeting last week. So those updates will be forwarded and will advance um, in that direction on the uh, security vestibule. The next, the next item, uh, this is an exterior concept. We have to do a little bit of uh, modifications outside of the sidewalks to get you to this door that's going to be left of the main entrance. We'll provide a, a, a card reader access to that spot as well as a, a camera to allow staff to know when you're outside if that door was to be locked. There will also be a small canopy which is the white bar above the door to provide shelter from the elements as you enter and exit that building. This diagram is the area of the classrooms that we're renovating to provide the flexible classrooms as well as the flexible learning spaces. Uh, the yellow spaces are the two, two, the classrooms where there are two classrooms together divided by a moving partition. We're going to upgrade and enhance that folding partition to something that can be moved and managed more quickly to allow for more time spent on curriculum rather than moving tables, furnitures, and walls. And that's all tied into furniture as well to enhance the 21st century learning capacity of those rooms. Uh, the blue squares indicate flexible learning rooms. Those are classrooms that will be converted from standard classrooms for rooms that will be updated with more modern furniture and technology to allow for quicker and flexible, more flexible learning. That's happening on both levels, the first floor as well as the second floor. But you can see this basic, basically we're going around and handling all the different teams. There are 10 teams in which those uh, teams of teachers will all receive the same treatment for those two, two spaces. Um, this is a concept diagram of those new folding partitions that will be installed. They're all individual units that break apart, slide into position quickly, and get stacked along a wall. The concept is to provide that folding wall as wide as possible in that room, only leaving small pieces of wall in place that we can then put uh, certain features like additional power and things like that that are needed in the classroom. The concept is to be as open and flexible as possible. Mm -hmm. Again, this was worked through with staff, uh, several different staff meetings as well as staff presentations showing us what they want to do and how they want to do it. So then we've designed these spaces and this partition with that in mind. Um, this is some of the diagrams that were developed in the discussions of the type of seating arrangements that may be incorporated into that. So there's and we're just trying to show you how these, these groups of students will be moving around when that partition is open and the teachers decide to move different groups and different sizes around that room for different instructional purposes. The next few slides just kind of show an indication of the type of furniture and technology that the intent is to provide for those classrooms to provide that accessibility to information, technology, and to create those different small group learning spaces with groups of four, six, eight, 10, 12, two, or even one. So we're working with staff to develop um, a comprehensive plan of space as well as furniture and amenities to create that environment. Again, another example of types of furniture. We haven't selected the type of furniture yet, but these are the types that allow for that motion, movability, different standing positions, seating positions, soft furniture, hard furniture. But again, it's all designed to uh, create a flexible classroom and it's done in concert with the staff and the direction the curriculum is headed. Uh, the last component to the remodel is a site circulation modification. As we understand, there are numerous issues on site with stacking of vehicular traffic to the point of creating some hazardous conditions out on the main intersection. So one of the things we're trying to accomplish here, and that's working with the township and the county traffic engineering, we are going to kind of flip-flop the traffic around to provide the buses at the front. We'll make a few modifications to the parking lot to allow that to happen. And then we will be bringing the um, parents in and coming along this drive and back around here for a turnaround so that we can drop off along the main surfaces and create a longer drop-off as well as create a queuing for parents in, in traffic of about three times the current length. So those are the types of things we're trying to accommodate with the renovations at Nagel. Any questions for, for Lance? 
what are you doing to make sure we're still working within the budget? Well, at, at each and every step, we provide cost estimates. Um, we have a number of options for each one of those um, solutions in terms of the <laughs> amount of wall, the type of wall, and the furniture. And we work with those budgets. We put those budgets together for each individual component, add it up to make sure we're within the budget. And today, I'd like to announce that we are currently under budget. You've worked with the Nagel community, uh, so do they understand the traffic flow change that's going to occur, and importantly, the inability to drive through where you now drive through? Is that? We, we, have worked, we have had a community meeting where we've presented okay. this information uh, to allow an opportunity for feedback. After that, and I did forget uh, actually the fire marshals, we've, we've had meetings with the fire marshal, the county, and the township traffic engineering to resolve these sort of issues. And if I might add, the, um, the interior uh, uh, modifications that we're making as well as the security vestibule is a project that we're hoping to get off the ground even this summer. Um, and so we're going to go back to the design phase. It's pretty much designed and we'll be bringing that back to you in the very near future, uh, a bid package for you to uh, approve that we go out to bid. Uh, this concept with the parking lot, since it, uh, um, all of the paving basically companies have been booked for months and months. I mean, you do this kind of almost a year ahead of time. And so this project, the, the, the parking lot modifications will be a next summer project. And, and we will we'll definitely have uh, an opportunity to share with the parents and, and do the walkthroughs and, and how, to, how to make this work at that time. And part of the project, I presume, also includes the technology update that is the <coughs> increased bandwidth, power access, wireless throughout the school. That's correct. Any other questions? Thank you. Comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Next item, uh, district updates from the superintendent, the uh, pay to participate program. Uh, yes. Um, uh, this spring, uh, Rick, myself, and our athletic director from the middle school and the high schools met on several occasions to talk about um, the programs and our expansion of some of the programs and, and the cost of some of those programs. And our pay to participate fee, if, when we look at uh, the other ECC schools as well as other schools uh, uh, surrounding and very similar to us, are, are very reasonable. Uh, we've not had any increase in the pay to participate fees now for, I believe, six years. Um, and so with that, with the additional cost that, uh, that is being consumed or assumed by the, by the district, um, we are, I'm asking the board to, uh, along with the, uh, the treasurer and our ADs, for a modest increase of paid participate fees from 140 per sport to 160 per sport, with a couple caveats. The caveat is, is that uh, um, a single student uh, who participates in two activities that have a participation fee in regards to athletics and or band, um, if they choose the third uh, sport, then there would, that fee would be waived. So in that case, a maximum of, uh, of 160 twice, uh, or $320 per individual student. Uh, there will be no changes at the middle school level. And also, as always, there will always be the uh, consideration for uh, individuals and or families that uh, have difficulties um, in, in assuming those fees. <coughs> so if you have any questions, but also I'd like to recommend that we look at a modest increase in participation fees from $140 to $160 at the high school level today. And we will, um, at the middle school, the fees will remain $100 per activity for sport. And I understand that um, the cap for, what is it, more than, more than two? Two, yeah, more than two. <laughs> is more easily managed and has broader application than a family cap, is that right? Yes, uh, we took a look at that and you know, the, in the past we had a family cap that was very rarely utilized. And we think that this will be a better opportunity of course for our parents and our students than the family cap. Uh, also, it was very hard to manage because we were trying to manage a family cap and trying to, you know, the, the, uh, from the middle school and the high school and, and what family and how much is paid and those types of things. So this more likely provides relief to the families that need it than yes. the family cap did. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Um, my understanding is uh, you have a program in place where there is a need, uh, family, individual, or otherwise, and that it is 
uh, robustly yes, it used. Is. Absolutely, each okay. at the middle and the high school levels. That went, uh, yeah, we have a program in place that our athletic directors and administrators. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Uh, we have a motion. I move that we approve the pay to participate uh, program uh, fees as proposed. Second. Second. And to be clear, uh, we're talking about for uh, the 1516. 2015, 2016 school year, yes. Okay. And there's a second? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Tepper? Uh, Mr. Fruman? Yes. Mr. Hemelgarn? Yes. Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Uh, next item is board discussion. Uh, I have no topic for board discussion this evening. Is there anything else anybody wants to bring up? Moving on. Uh, the next items will be part of a consent agenda unless there is objection. Uh, hearing no objection, we will move forward with a consent agenda for items 9.1 through 13.1. Uh, we will start out with the uh, district calendar. Uh, Mr. Eckert. Thank you. I'd like to present uh, consent item 9.1, the district calendar for the school year 2016-2017. This is the calendar as presented during the public hearing on February 23rd. But since the public hearing, uh, Dr. Jackson has received some input from uh, the community and they would like us to, they wanted us to take a look at the spring break. Notice how I remember I called it a spring pause. We had a Monday, Friday. Um, I did follow uh, the direction of Dr. Jackson. I worked with Ms. Carnahan and other members of the administrative team to try to figure out if there was any way we could extend that spring break. And there really is no other way to do some contractual concerns and various other items in order to keep the start end dates where we are planning and not interrupt the education by limiting the number of student hours. So at this time, I'd like to present the calendar. If there are any questions. Any questions from the board? I know I did get some questions on the, uh, the concern over spring break, but after talking with you and Dr. Jackson, my understanding is it's, it's necessary as a part of our facilities program just to make it all work. Is that? Yes, sir. I mean, it, it is a, a very, it's a change for, for without a doubt, but there is really no adjustment that we can make to extend that time. And, and also understanding that this is only the 2016-17 calendar. We're or right now even working on a 2017-18 calendar, which will be similar. And uh, then we go back to uh, hopefully a normal type of calendar. And our goal is to have a longer uh, working uh, summer for our, our facilities to get our, our facilities and our buildings where they need to be. Thank you. I think we're all interested in making sure the facilities program works. Uh, but I would encourage you to make sure you broadly communicate that, because like I said, I know I got feedback uh, from people who were concerned. Yes, but. definitely. I would echo that. Um, I, I think the those people that are actually in tune with what the schedule is going to be like in the next year, let alone the next two years, is probably not all that broad. Um, whatever we can do to make sure families appreciate what it is we have to do, the adjustments we're making to get our facilities program done, including shortening the spring break into a spring pause is, is really critical. People will make plans and they will not appreciate that it's, it's short. Yes. Whatever we can do to communicate. Uh, definitely, we'll continue to communicate uh, through Ms. Daggett and uh, Dr. Jackson. I was invited to the uh, Forest Hills Council uh, this past month where we were able to present it to the Forest Hills Council also. And then again, this is not for next year, it's for the following year. So we'll get that out as quickly as possible so that people can begin planning a year ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item 9.2. Um, this is Betsy Ryan, uh, foreign exchange student. Uh, for 9.2, we have a motion to approve the enrollment and waiver of fees for a foreign exchange student, Candela Alonso Garcia from Spain, to attend Turpin High School for the 2015-16 school year. All information according to the board policy has been received and reviewed for this student. Any questions? Nope. That's a good thing. Uh, moving on to curriculum. 
uh, item 10.1, uh, supplemental book for language arts. Mr. Chamberlain. Anita Eshelman, our elementary programs coordinator, will also come up because if you get down to 10.5, with new adoption. So we'll do this together. Natasha Adams, our director, is out of town with some of the administrators who aren't here tonight. They're in Mentor looking at, or they're in a national conference, and Mentor is a leading district across the country in technology integration, personalization of learning. I spoke with her today. She had um, nice things to say about them and uh, was, how to, how to say it, she was very happy with our position right now relative to them. Um, and we did talk about facilities and, and what, our, what our, we think our very good position will be once the facilities are put in place too. So I just wanted to give you that brief update. Um, items 10.1 through 10.4 are supplemental books for language arts. They've been on display in the board office since late March. The first is Gallows Hill. That is a companion piece to The Crucible, Arthur Miller's The Crucible. That's for grade 10 English language arts. The second piece is Start Something That Matters, a nonfiction book for seventh grade language arts at Nagel, a service-oriented book. The third, some of you may have heard of, I Am Malala. That is the story of Malala Yousafzai, the uh, young lady um, who has had trials and tribulations just trying to get an education. And that is for seventh grade as well. And then the final one is Case Closed, Nine Mysteries Unlocked by Modern Science, another nonfiction book for um, seventh grade and uh, the superintendent recommends the board approve all of those for language arts and then I'll turn it over to Anita for a moment. Thanks. Um, item 10.5 is for the Eureka math that has been on review at the <coughs> central office since Mar the March board meeting. Um, and I'm recommending that the board approve this adoption to be used as the backbone of mathematics instruction for grades K to 6. Um, Ms. Adams spoke about this adoption at our last meeting and talked to you about how there was a team of um, committee members who evaluated eight different um, curriculum and through that Eureka stood you know way out among all of those curriculum as well as there was an article in Education Week that we shared with that committee and we shared with you um, that evening too that of the 20 curricula, mathematics curricula that they had reviewed, that Eureka was among the top three. Um, so we recommend that for board approval. Item 10.6 um, is the mathematics course of study. So prior to requesting that approval, um, this will be on review also at the central office in the curriculum department until the next board meeting on May 18th, um, where formal approval will be requested. This document was also created um, over the course of this last year with the same committee, um, but it was representative committee of teachers, administrators, as well as consultants from Hamilton County, um, Ms. Adams, the director, uh, for, th through that committee over the course of five or six meetings. Um, this course of study document is based on current research, as well as the best practices in mathematical instruction. Um, and more importantly, Ohio's new learning standards. The course of study outlines Forest Hill's philosophy of a focused and coherent curriculum, emphasizing conceptual understanding as well as procedural fluency, which is necessary for mathematics instruction. In addition to the Ohio's new learning standards, there are eight standards of mathematical practice. Those are the foundation for mathematics instruction that describe what the teacher does as well as what the student's disposition is in relationship to math. The Forest Hills philosophy recognizes that in this world of today that we need commitment not only from our teachers but also from our community, our parents, administrators, and especially our dedicated students to ensure that they leave Forest Hills uh, with the ability to solve problems that don't even exist. And we believe that what this outlines um, supports that, that the materials that we're asking for also supports that our students will be there. Along with the course of study document, the committee is finalizing a framework for mathematics instruction that will further define what math looks like and sounds like from both a teacher's perspective and a student's perspective when you walk into the classrooms at Forest Hills. 
Okay, I'll talk uh, for a moment about the secondary portion of the course of study. Groups of teachers from Nagel, mathematics teachers, Nagel, Anderson, and Turpin met eight times this school year. Um, they, there were two prior years to this work just to set up and understand the new standards and how to get our course sequences in place. So this work's been ongoing for several years now. Um, and they discuss course sequences, math practices, assessment practices, uh, resources that they need for instruction and um, had a lot of opportunities for professional development. Uh, as Mrs. Eshelman said, the learning standards are Ohio's new learning standards for mathematics and we have gone to an integrated mathematics course sequence. You've heard about that in prior board meetings. Students will begin that in eighth grade and some will follow that all the way almost or actually through their senior year um, depending on uh, what sequence they will be in. The standards themselves are more rigorous course sequences had to change accordingly. Um, to repeat, the, the look for tool for the standards for mathematical practice, you'll find that in the course of study. That's a new approach for us. We actually had teachers visit other teachers in this course of study to get into the classrooms of people either not in their building or not in their grade level to see what instruction looks like K through 12 and Forest Hills. We would love to be able to do more of that in the coming years. Um, but to get all of this work done, there was only so much time for those visits. Um, there are still elements of secondary course construction to be completed, such as the creation of a new business calculus course at the high school level. Um, we could hopefully someday envision this as a College Credit Plus course, uh, not an AP course, but a business calculus course that would really truly be a, a college level course. Um, Resources for secondary beyond what textbooks currently exist are almost all of a digital nature, though again with new courses coming in um, in years beyond here, there may be other requests for adoption of approved materials. Finally, I'd like to thank all the math teachers and the specialists who spent so much time and energy and really approached this process with a thoughtful and collaborative approach. That was probably the best part of it for me was to be in the room with the math teachers. I was an English teacher. By the end, my brain would hurt but because they were talking math all day, but they were so passionate. There were strong opinions, lots of strong experiences in the room. Um, and, and so those discussions could get rather lively, um, but all of those people had the best interests of our students at heart and the best interests of instruction for Forest Hill. So it was really, um, I'm proud of the process. We still have more work to do. So we recommend it for approval and, and we'll be back in front of you in May to um, finish the process. Thank you, appreciate the explanation. Anybody have any questions or comments? Well, I appreciate the very detailed explanation. Um, and I know you did that intentionally for us. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, but this is tough stuff, you know, the new learning standards and, and the efforts that you're going to, to make sure that we're looking at the right curriculum and making sure it's the right curriculum for our students is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Certainly. <coughs> Any other questions, comments? I just echo the same thing. I appreciate the hard work that went into getting a curriculum that works for Forest Hills and that our education professionals feel confident about the curriculum. Mm -hmm. so, Glad to do it. Glad to do it. Absolutely. It was the work of a team, for sure. Sure. Yes, we have uh, two, one last thing. We have two uh, math specialists, Kathy Kohlmeyer and Amy Wettengale, who I don't know if they are here tonight, but uh, really helped lead this process in so many ways, really help uh, get the teachers to work cohesively, and, and we really could not have done it without them. So a, a critical resource that we have in this district. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, moving on, the next item is human resources uh, from our human resources director, uh, Mrs. Tammy Carnahan. Item 11.1, human resources report. Item A, we have retirement. Uh, we actually just heard about uh, Tim Fuller a little earlier this evening. Obviously, we are very sad to see him go. Uh, he's just an amazing teacher at Anderson High School. Lisa Robinette as well at Maddox, um, who has just done a great job for us um, as an interven inter intervention specialist. Also, item B, we have retirement of Marcia Jones, who uh, makes sure that we all get our pay check on time, uh, as well as the rest of the Treasurer's Department not just Marsha, but you too. Uh, and Karen Warren at Turpin High School. Um, again, just great employees. Um, item C, resignation. Wendy Hertel um, is resigning as the assistant principal at Sherwood Elementary. We have certified staff, classified staff. Item D, we do see a couple leave of absences there for the next school year. 
Item E are job descriptions. Um, and these are for the EMIS coordinator and teacher leader. And as um, Mr. Chamberlain just mentioned, we have a specialist in, in various areas. And this job description for teacher leader does cover their um, responsibilities. Item F is a salary schedule for summer school. Um, and it is effective for this school year um, through July 31st, 2017. I would uh, let the board know that what this is, is uh, it is a $1 raise per hour for those people who are um, being paid through the summer school. They've not had a raise uh, for five years. And so I uh, thought it was, you know, we, we actually looked at our peer districts and tried to make sure we were in line. And we thought that it was time that they were able to have um, a small raise. Change of assignment. Um, I, the third item under change of assignment, John Cook, I do want to bring to the board's attention that this is a new position. This is also a teacher leader position. It's not reflected in the FTE this evening because it does not start until the next school year, but it will be reflected when we make those adjustments, uh, typically in either the August or the September meeting. Um, item H is a change of salary. Moving on to item J, uh, these are appointments for the 14-15 school year. Item K are appointments for next school year. As you might imagine, um, we are starting the hiring process for the 15-16 school year and we're very pleased to have these three individuals who are going to be joining us. Um, item L are part-time appointments. You can take a look at those. They move, go on to uh, page four where you also see our it says outdoor education program, uh, pages four and five, but that is key. Um, and then also we have athletic event workers at the bottom of page five, moving on to item M, where we have our uh, coaches, advisors. I might mention too, Destination Imagination, you see several of our advisors there. You know, we just can't say enough about the great things our advisors did for, with our Destination Imagination teams, many of which went to uh, state competition. Um, and item N, substitute personnel. And uh, please note that since the last board meeting, there has been a minor decrease of 0.13 in FTE. Again, due to some bus, just you know, readjustments with bus routes, and the staffing level stands now at 780.25. The superintendent recommends the board approve the HR report. So moved. Oh, that's we're doing the consent agenda. Sorry. Yeah. Any I'll other questions, comments? Uh, I appreciate the report, and I know you have, we spoke about this earlier, but um, for next year, uh, at some point in the not too distant future, to get a preview of what we're looking at for overall uh, positions just for, next, for, for yes. the next school year, yes. but uh, for some future meeting. You will have that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Moving on to uh, business operations, uh, Mr. Johnson. Before I forget, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the ladies that joined me earlier today, the 10 ladies up here, excluding Mrs. Butler, represented 207 years of experience with the Forest Hills School District, so that's a big factor in why they have earned those awards. Uh, and one other thing I want to mention as far as uh, what Lance was saying about Nagel, uh, one of the things that they wanted to get done over there was an upgrade to the sound system in their cafeteria, so we've, we've uh, commissioned that to get started and done over the course of the summer. Uh, we've also talked about with the work being done during the summer of 2016 on the driveway is taking advantage of parent gatherings at the end of this 15-16 school year to show drawings of what that's going to be like so they'll be made uh, aware of that. And we hope to bring a request to bid for that work, uh, not the driveway, but the security vestibule and flexible classroom space to the May board meeting and award that bid at the June board meeting. Uh, item 12.1 is the amendment to the contract of Moats Engineering. Uh, the Board of Education approved a five-year renewal agreement effective uh, January 1st, 2014 with Moats Engineering. It was really a five-year fee schedule uh, with them. It did not include uh, commissioning services, um, but we're bringing an amendment that would include those uh, services. So the Treasurer recommends the Board approve the resolution to amend the agreement with Moats Engineering as shown in the attachment. Uh, item 12.2 is a request to advertise for bid. Uh, Lance, brought, Lance and Joe brought the last board meeting some of the work that's going to be done over at 
Sherwood and Air. Uh, this item is to uh, request the board's uh, permission for advertisement of the installation of the ADA compliant ramps here in Sherwood uh, as a precursor to the work on the security vestibules which hopefully will start over there this summer, or excuse me, this fall. So the treasurer again recommends the board approve the request to authorize uh, us to advertise for, bid for these projects. Item 12.3 is the contract award for geotech services at Air, Maddox, Sherwood, Summit, and Wilson. Proposals were open and read on March 2nd for geotechnical services at these schools, and the effective date of the contract is April 28th. So again, the treasurer would recommend the board award uh, the contracts and approve the resolution as shown in the attachment. Uh, item 12.4 is for the contract award for geothermal conductivity testing at Wilson Elementary. Uh, proposals were opened and read on March 25th for the ge geothermal conductivity testing at Wilson Elementary. The treasurer recommends the board approve the resolution and award the contract as shown in the attachment. Item 12.5 is a contract for award for the surveying services of Air, Maddox, Sherwood, Summit, and Wilson uh, Elementary Schools as well as Nagel Middle School. Again, proposals were opened and read on March 16th for these services at the schools mentioned. The effective date of the contract would be April 28th. The treasurer recommends uh, the board approve the resolution and award the contracts as shown in the attachments. Uh, I might mention that all this work is going to commence uh, probably some uh, sometime shortly after the first of May. For, excuse me, the first of May, and should be completed by the end of the first week in June. <clears throat> Finally, uh, twelve point six is, six is the bid opening for the gymnasium, air conditioning, and ventilation work at Sherwood Elementary. Uh, bids were opened and read on Friday, April 17th for the air conditioning and ventilation work at Sherwood Elementary School. Uh, the complete bid tabulation recommendation is shown. Uh, the treasurer recommends the board uh, approve the resolution and the award to award the contract to the low bidder shown, shown in the attachment. 12.7 uh, is school bus bid replacement. Um, we opened up bids on uh, April 20, excuse me, April 13th for two 72 passenger buses. The treasurer recommends the board award the contract to Edwin Davis and Sons for the replacement school buses indicated in the attachment. Any questions for Mr. Johnson? The school buses, we used to get significant money from the state, but we don't anymore. Is that correct? Uh, we apply for it. Okay. Uh, there was a federal grant, and we were, we were Fortunately, only 408th on the waiting list nationally for that. So oh, good. Oh, great. <clears throat> uh, moving on to the uh, treasurer's report, Mr. Tepfer. Yeah, item uh, item A under 13 uh, is the donations. We have almost $22,000 donated um, this past month. Uh, this time of year, we see significant donations in after prom theater as well as significant donations to our high school scholarship <coughs> programs. We're very fortunate that our graduating seniors have um, maybe a book or two, or half a book maybe, of, uh, of, don of scholarship money. Um, we have um, item B as a statement report accounts. We have two funds there that are in a negative position as we're waiting for uh, funding to occur, Fund 572 and 587, but we have requested those funds and expect them uh, this month. Uh, but all of their accounts are in good condition. Um, item C, we have our general fund receipts. Um, you can see we received most of our tax revenue for the year, 86.23% of our total. Um, you'll see it's a little bit more than 100%. That's there because the county auditor only allows, uh, they have a, a pretty conservative estimate. Our five-year forecast is different um, with revenue, but the, um, the state, or excuse me, the county actually sets the uh, tax revenue. Um, at a lower level, uh, more conservative level. So that's why there's a little bit of an uh, uh, increase over 100%. Um, item D and E are our, our expenditures, uh, both by function and object, uh, in line with where we anticipate to be at the end of 331. Um, a little bit ahead, um, a little bit higher than the three year average on our, on our expending, uh, not quite a percent, but still well within the range that we expected to be. 
um, F, we have our bank reconciliations, um, GR investment portfolio. I will be able to show some significant interest earnings very soon um, <laughs> as uh, both our uh, building fund as well as our general fund um, investments um, um, are in motion. And obviously, uh, interest earnings are, are coming in as those uh, uh, securities mature. Um, item H, we have the amendments to the appropriation. We are in the process of making changes this month and next month in line for um, our year end. Uh, still no change to the general fund. Uh, we did increase the building fund, obviously, as, as construction is underway. Uh, we're lining up all of our other funds uh, for, for year end. Um, in item I, we have our board service fund expenses. Uh, J, uh, we're um, requesting the board approve a, a little bit early transfer to the Anderson High School Athletic Fund to kind of get them through the year. Then when we get this transfer in July or August, so this is um, in lieu of part of that. Um, item K is uh, the request to, to close two student activity funds. Um, so it's recommended the board approve both uh, this report as well as all items and the consent of 9.1 through 13.1 as presented. Do you have any questions for the treasurer? I move that we approve items uh, 9.1 to 13.1. Do you have a second? Second. second. Mr. Tepper? Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Helmogarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Um, moving on to reports uh, to the Board of Education, uh, item 14.1, Business Advisory Committee report. Yeah, we met last Monday on the 20th. Uh, uh, each, as we're going through the facility program, we do talk about that every meeting, kind of the, the hot items that are being discussed. Um, so we kind of keep up on what building presentations have um, uh, been done at that point we did talk about our property and liability insurance and the process we went through uh, an item coming up we did discuss our cash reserve policy the importance and the need and, and kind of what that meant um, both now and in the future um, and then we also had some salary and benefit um, comparisons and i think we're going to get into that a little bit more next time um, so um, it's a lively discussion uh, on a lot of different topics we also talked about the uh, security breach at Anthem and what the impact that had for us. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, next up, Forest Hills Foundation report. Uh, Forest Hills Foundation for Education, as always, has been quite busy. Most recently, they've been engaged in a laptop computer drive, including, I think, just this last weekend. They were collecting uh, computers here in the Anderson Center, I believe. Uh, that drive is continuing, and anyone that is interested in participating can drop them off at the district office. Uh, for those of you that are not um, familiar with the laptop computer drive, what the foundation doing is taking used computers, having them clean, uh, having some district software loaded to them that will convert them to Chromebooks, and then they're being given to students within the district that otherwise wouldn't have computers. So it's a wonderful program. Uh, certainly we would encourage everybody to participate in it. Um, second thing is the Forest Hills 5K, which is Saturday, May 9th at Nagel at 8 a.m. Um, registration remains open, so please sign up for that. Third is the um, ACT practice class that will be going on at Turpin and Anderson. It's going to be on May 20th at Turpin, on May 21st at Anderson. It's open to juniors. So uh, again, please sign up for that. And then I'm pleased to respond that the soiree for success will be held for the second time. It was a great success last year, a wonderful event. This year it's going to be at the Beachmont Audi dealership, that new beautiful building on <coughs> Beachmont that many years ago, I think, was where they had that leaps and bounds place. Do you remember that? <laughs> My kids were um, And that's going to be on November 14th. So look for further details on that. Um, last year was amazing. Hopefully we can have such a wonderful event again, again this year. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, moving on, uh, the Forest Hills Teachers Association. Uh, reporting is Donna Lava, president of the Forest Hills Teachers Association. A little nervous of the feedback here, so 
Oh, did, okay, great. Uh, good evening. I just want to take a quick opportunity to give you an update. As I noted to uh, Mr. Smith, I did tell him that I was going to try to send a member from each one of our board people to come and present. And unfortunately, Dan Armstrong could not be here tonight, but he wanted to be to make sure I just gave a quick overview. One of the best things that we've had happen this past month is um, we've been invited to serve on many different committees, which is something that the collaboration part of the board and the teacher association agreed to many years ago and the one that in particular that was mentioned is the business advisory committee that mr teffer was speaking of earlier and uh, we had a lot of good feedback and i think it was a good opportunity for our teachers and our board to have an opportunity to work with rick to move forward on that uh, last month i know john farmer came forward to talk a little bit about our otes committee and some of the work that we've been doing and some of the feedback that we gave to you then about some of the challenges and some of the things that we're moving on and actually here in the next couple of weeks and in next month, the board will see some of our work that we've been doing with uh, Mrs. Carnahan and the Human Resource Department, as well as our group that meets monthly. We have an OTES committee that consists of 10 members, uh, so many from the administration, some from the teachers, and we are gonna be working on some of the changes that are being faced by many school districts. We think we're doing a pretty good job working together to try to make that a more uh, workable situation for our staff. Also, just want to give a big thanks to uh, Brad and Anita tonight for a great presentation. I really appreciate all the extra things here. When we talk about really opening the doors for our teachers to be involved in curriculum, being involved in making decisions about their teaching and the things they do, it really does make a big impact in a positive way for our staff. Uh, just to give you a quick one more update, this coming month we're going to be working on, we offer uh, two general assemblies to all of our memberships. Uh, one happens in October and the next one will be on May 7th. At that time, we'll present any agreements that are being discussed with the board and so forth for our membership to take a look at, as well as uh, selecting our new uh, staff for FHTA. In a positive response, I just want to add that we're really excited that we won a OEA uh, leadership grant this past month, which was an outstanding opportunity that we're going to be working directly with. I know the human resources, we have some stuff, ideas with our curriculum department to try to increase teacher leadership in the district. Any questions? Thank you for your report. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the legislative liaison report. Um, there are two uh, hot topics. Uh, one is in Columbus. Uh, actually, this is still in the bill stage. Uh, the um, House has passed uh, House Bill 64, which is a substitute bill for the budget. Uh, the good news is uh, the, the governor usually puts out the very first round of a budget bill and uh, we were going to take a hit in that one and uh, after listening to an hour and a half webinar this afternoon uh, the version now is very complex but to make a long story short uh, the good news is we're going to be roughly even if the house version were to be passed today they've got a long way to go on that but uh, and like i said there's a lot of complexity uh, one of the good things was they are adding some incentives for the College Credit Plus program, which might actually help us out financially, which obviously a school district like Forest Hills, uh, that's, that's an important thing because we have a lot of students that would likely uh, take advantage of that. Uh, second thing is actually at the national level. I normally don't talk about that much, but the Elementary and Secondary uh, Education Act was passed out of the uh, Senate Health and Education and Labor Committee. Uh, that's only significant because uh, that's otherwise known as No Child Left Behind. Uh, hasn't been reauthorized in, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, and there are a lot of outdated provisions in that. And once this finally gets through, uh, it doesn't have a huge impact on Forest Hills, but it's still somewhat important on the national level. Uh, that's all I have for legislative liaison, in case anybody has any questions. Just, just one comment. I think that, you know, we talk about it being a positive compared to where we were, but we receive a third of our funding from the state, so the fact that it's flat, um, on the surface is okay, but obviously our costs go up every year and, and, and we've been flatlined for, for um, most of the last 10 years. Um, so, um, you know, although it's a good thing compared to where it was, um, <laughs> staying flat actually costs our local taxpayers more involvement in the process. So it is, uh, that's just the reality. Thank you for pointing that out. Because historically, up until whatever, five or six, seven, eight years ago, we were on a steady 2.6%, something like that increase. And it was a regular drumbeat, and the world changed uh, about uh, eight years ago. And then when we took the hit two years in a row, significant hit, we're still kind of coming out of that. So thank you for pointing that out. Any other questions, comments? Uh, moving on, uh, policy committee, uh, Mrs. Bissinger. 
Um, <clears throat> the policies that are listed in item 14.5 are policies that we brought to you last time um, for review. They are largely uh, the result of uh, legislative um, mandates and uh, we're recommending them tonight for passage. We make a motion. Do we do that now? Uh, I think so. All right. Yeah. I will do that. Um, I move that we approve the policies in number 14.5. I will second that. Um, any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Tepper? Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Hemelgarn? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, moving on, the saga report. Uh, the Saga group met on <clears throat> Tuesday, April 14th. I was the board's rep there that day. Uh, we are now participants in uh, Safer Schools Ohio, which is a uh, f basically a phone number that you that uh, kids can call, and it goes to the state level, but then it's a state hotline, but they will report to local authorities. The, the phone number is 844-SAFER-OH. Um, we had a discussion about uh, making that more well-known. Uh, through t Twitter, uh, principals, athletic directors, and such. Uh, on Saturday, April 25th, was nat National Prescription uh, Drug Take Back Day at Anderson Center where you could drop off old prescription bottles. And I learned something, because <clears throat> my husband just had some surgery and he wanted to know how to get rid of his old stuff. Uh, they have a receptacle there all the time at the sheriff's office that you can, you can get rid of your old prescriptions. You're not supposed to throw them away or flush them down the toilet, that's bad. So um, you can do that. The uh, Forest Hills 5K, as everyone knows, is uh, Saturday the main, the 9th. Uh, Saga will have pens, post-its, bags, and water bottles to give away. Uh, there is an increase, and Forest, you may have to help me with the pronunciation of this. There is an increase uh, all over and in this area as well in the use of Suboxone. Suboxone. Uh, yes, it's, uh, as I understand it, it's uh, an alternative to heroin, but it's longer lasting. It sort of acts like methadone and people are abusing it. Correct. Um, and for some reason there's an increase in pregnant women using it, which I don't know why, but that's what they said. So it's a new drug that I didn't know about, but it's probably not new, I just am um, unfamiliar. <clears throat> um, they talked about the uh, life skills curriculum in the schools. It's evidence-based substance curriculum. It's not um, uh, scare tactics. It's teaching skills to say no to kids through communication, um, social skills, resistance skills, and relationships. We have it in grades four through six in the health classes, fifth grade peer counseling, which is where the older high school kids come in and talk to the fifth graders after school. My, my son did that, he loved it. Um, seventh and eighth grade health, the Nagel Advisory, high school link crew, which is sort of the uh, leadership group that helps ninth graders in to the school and ninth grade health. Um, Saga spoke at the spring sports parents meetings at Anderson, Turpin, and Nagel. And they are on the agenda to speak at the sixth to seventh grade transition meeting. Here's the most surprising thing that happened at the Saga meeting. I had no idea that Saga's grant was up. I, I, I didn't know, shame on me. I don't know why I didn't know, but I didn't know. Uh, the grant stops for Saga this year. Um, it was a five-year grant originally. It was renewed for five years. So for, thus, for those of us who have kids in the schools now, um, we've grown up with Saga and it's over. And I don't know that there's any provision to uh, extend exactly what they're doing, but I know that uh, Mr. Eckert has been in discussion, and I believe Betsy might be part of that as well, as to continuing some of the programs that Saga does. So we're not just saying goodbye to Saga and nothing's gonna continue. So um, stay tuned. And just to be clear, that was a federal grant, right? It was not something that it was we were federal. providing. No, so no, no, it was federal. It was something that they were dependent upon a federal program. And those um, primarily women, but there are some men too, uh, have worked very hard over the years. Very committed people. So. Very important subject. Yes, and I guess uh, I guess publicly we should thank them for their for their service and, and their efforts for our community. Uh, anything else under reports to the Board of Education? Uh, moving on, we're about to go into the executive session to cover three uh, different topics. Um, and typically, uh, the board does not take action following executive session. Uh, with that, Mr. Hemelgarn, will you please uh, give us the motion? Pursuant to Ohio Rise Code 121.22G1, I hereby move that the board adjourn to executive session for the purpose of considering 
the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, compensation of a public employee or official. Also pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G2, I hereby move that the board adjourn to executive session for the purpose of considering the purchase of property for public purposes or sale of property at competitive bidding since disclosure at this time would give an unfair competitive or bargaining advantage to persons whose personal private interest is adverse to the general public interest. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Hamilgarn? Yes. Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Before we uh, adjourned executive session, I'd just like to let everybody know that the next regular meeting of the Board of Education will be May 18th, uh, 2015 in this room, maybe with a different configuration in this room, but in this room. Uh, so with that, uh, we will move to executive session.